well a uh, good afternoon dear children in fact more in, in the session previously we have held with uh, we have completed the continuity topic now the topic that i have taken up is the fifth chapter of your part 1 that is differentiability this is this particular term is no new term for you because you have already studied in class 11th differentiation even as well in physics you have studied differentiation of the functions like sin x cos x etc now it is going to be a bit of continuation ki what you have studied in your previous class it is now going to be seen here i give you for a small recap that you have studied already uh, dy by dx is equal to limit h tends to 0 f of x plus h minus f of x upon h this is in fact called rule of ab initio ab initio or it was it is also called first principle first principle this you have already studied and it doesn't require any reminder of what you have studied now i will be continuing further from where we have stopped in class 11th what is the first topic that you are going to come across in the class 12th differentiability that is the first topic number 1 is differentiation differentiation of composite function differentiation of composite function interestingly i ended in the previous topic the composite function now i am continuing with the same topic as well so here what exactly is composite function differentiation now it is also called differentiation of function of function please remember it is also called function of function now i will take a small problem for you to make understand say uh, differentiate differentiate y is equal to sin x square plus 5 with respect to x here i find two different functions one is the sin function the other one is an algebraic function x square plus 5 how would i would how i would go about this i take here say g of x is equal to sin x and f of x is equal to x square plus 5 now i try to find out what is g circle f of x we know that g of f of x is equal to g of f of x is x square plus 5 now here sin g of x is equal to sin x then g of something what is other than x will be replacing the x in the previous function that is going to be sin x square plus 5 so this is definitely a composite function now in the process if you observe when when this function is formulated you got two functions one is g of x and the other one is f of x suppose you want to differentiate and find out dy by dx what happens d by dx of sin x square plus 5 now it is as good as you, what you are trying to do is that here you are differentiating d by dx of g circle f of x this is exactly you are trying to do that means first function you come across is g that means you have to differentiate first g treating whatever is left out as only x differentiation of sin is what cos whatever is there you take as usual since the value which you have taken after having differentiated the first function is not the x so you have to differentiate that function as x square plus 5 as well now what happens it is cos x square plus 5 into differentiation of x square is 2x differentiation of 5 is 0 thus resulting it is 2x cos x square plus 5 i hope you have understood this an interesting question in fact you have got two functions in the process what you are trying to do is first you have differentiated g treating it as g of x and then you have differentiated f of x this is exactly the process that has taken place in the topic yeah now i will be taking up one more problem under the same topic for you what is that differentiate find dy by dx rather find dy by dx if y is equal to root 
cot x square. This is one more interesting problem. Here, there are altogether three functions. One is if I see root is the one function, g of x say root x function and then cot comes that is f of x is equal to cot x function and then the last function is f h of x is equal to x square. That means if you want you can first see f circle h of x, I interestingly it is f of h of x that is f of x square, this is going to be f of x square is going to be cot x square. Now if I calculate g circle f circle h of x is equal to g of f circle h of x is going to be g of cot x square. That means here this is definitely uh, since g of x is root x, whatever in the place of x will go under the radical sign. The radical sign is root cot x square. That means when you are differentiating this function, you are differentiating three functions g, f and h. That means you have to differentiate three diff times the differentiation will be coming into. That means d by dx of g circle f circle h. When you enter into the fray, first differentiation, first function that you come across is g. Then comes f, then comes h. That means you have to differentiate in this manner only. So, I would be taking the problem given dy by dx is equal to d by dx of root cot x square. It is uh, treated as what is d by dx of root x formula? d by dx of root x is equal to 1 by 2 root x. So, initially, jo bhi hai, whatever is here, you forget it is cot x square. You consider it is x only and you directly write this as 1 by 2 root under cot x square. Subsequently, you see that since it is not actually x as you dreamt in the formula, it is something else. So, that something else could be again differentiated for second time. Again, here 1 by 2 root cot x square differentiating now cot will be differentiated. What is the differentiation of cot? Minus cosecant square d by dx of cot x is equal to minus cosecant square x. So, as per that rule, I will be taking up here minus cosecant x square will be this is cosecant square x square because it was x. So, I got x it is x square which should be x square into d by dx of the x square which is going to be 1 by 2 root cot x square minus cosecant square x square into 2x because the differentiation of x square is 2x. So, finally, the 2 to cancel what you get is a net result minus x cosecant square x square upon root cot x square. Well, dear children, we have already completed differentiation of composite function. Now, we shall be moving on to the next topic implicit functions. What is implicit function? Implicit function in a very layman language I tell you a function in which x and y cannot be separated by any means. Say for example, I take one small example for you x square plus x y plus y square is equal to 100. You try any method you will not be able to separate x and y in this problem in this particular function. So, you do tra factorization you do anything you cannot separate it that is why it is called an implicit function. Whenever you try to differentiate differentiate an implicit function what you need to do is that instead of trying to separate x and y and write uh, in the explicit form of y is equal to f of x what you try to do is that you try to differentiate directly what it is going to come differentiating x square plus x y plus y square is equal to differentiating 100 that is it is going to result differentiating x square is 2x differentiating x y is a product rule x dy by dx plus y plus differentiating y square is 2y and dy by dx is equal to 0. Now, in the expression after having differentiated you got terms with dy by dx, terms without dy by dx. Take terms without dy by dx to the right side keeping them as usual the remaining x dy by dx plus 
2 y dy by dx is equal to minus 2 x plus minus y sorry uh, then it is uh, take dy by dx as a common factor you get x plus 2 y is equal to minus of 2 x plus y resulting dy by dx is equal to minus 2 x plus y upon x plus 2 y. This is exactly what we call differentiation of implicit function. I will be taking one more problem for you to under, make you understand. Say for example, you have y is equal to sorry uh, sin, sin uh, x sin square y sin square y plus cos x y is equal to pi. Supposing that I consider this is the third problem uh, 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 sorry second problem of uh, implicit function differentiation. Now what I am going to do is that directly I will try to differentiate d by dx of sin square y plus cos x y is equal to differentiation of pi. Thus resulting what happens it is d by differentiation of sin square d by dx of sin square y plus d by dx of cos x y is equal to 0. So, yeah now I am going to take this as differentiating the power to sin y will come as usual. Now, differentiating the sin y will remain here plus here differentiating cos is differentiating of cos is minus sin x y then since it is not x again it gets differentiated using the uh, I mean get using the product rule now. It is going to be 2 sin y it is going to be cos y and y will be differentiated as dy by dx minus sin x y into differentiating this using product rule x dy by dx plus y is equal to 0. The resulting this is going to be sin 2y dy by dx minus sin xy into x dy by dx minus y sin xy is equal to 0. There are terms with dy by dx, there are terms without sin uh, the dy by dx. Separate them, you get dy by dx whole bracket taking common from these two sin 2y minus sin xy into x is equal to y sin xy that is dy by dx is equal to y sin xy upon sin 2y minus sin xy into x. This is the result of this problem of implicit functions. Yes, dear children, now we are going to learn topic 3 of differentiation topic, differentiation of inverse trigonometric functions. I will be taking one or two problems for you to make you understand. Y is equal to say for example tan inverse 3x minus x cube upon 1 minus 3x square where 1 by root 3 less than x less than 1 by root 3. If this is the function that I am supposed to differentiate, now let me explain you if it is, it is in the form of tan inverse x. Differentiation of tan inverse x is 1 upon 1 plus x square. Now the problem is that if you try to apply this formula into this picture, in the place of x you have a big giant picture. So, which you will not be able to resolve. So, instead of directly working out a differentiation on this function as it is, you better go for a short form like what you have studied in class 12th uh, inverse trigonometric functions. This is an equivalent form. I am giving you the rule 3 tan inverse x is equal to tan inverse 3x minus x cube upon 1 minus 3x square. So, I whether I do the differentiation for this function on the right side or I do it here I do for this one 
both are equivalent so instead of doing for this and exerting much i will be taking this as an equivalent structure so that it becomes 3 tan inverse x so dy by dx is equal to d by dx of 3 tan inverse x that is 3 d by differentiate d by dx of tan inverse x it is equal to 3 upon 1 plus x square this is a very simplest result that you can obtain if you go for this direct differentiation you will be in very deep trouble because by the time you solve this particular structure for differentiation you lose your time if whereas this problem this kind of problems are given for usually one mark only well dear children we have done one problem now i shall be doing few more problems for you to make you understand what is the importance of inverse trigonometric differentiation let us see this problem suppose find dy by dx if y is equal to cos inverse 1 minus x square upon 1 plus x square. Here I want to tell you one thing, if you want to directly differentiate this particular function, like you write directly it is cos inverse 1 minus x square upon 1 plus x square, instantly what happens here, the formula for differentiating uh, d by dx of cos inverse x is 1 upon root under 1 minus x square with negative sign. That means, if I see the x, that means it should be x square, but is it x? No, it is not x, it is 1 minus x square by 1 upon 1, one, upon one plus x square. That means, when you differentiate this particular function directly, if you intend to do it, then it is going to be function of function. When you function of function, you have to differentiate this function as well as this function separately. They, then it is going to cost you a lot of time. So, what I suggest you, we have a formula that we have studied in inverse trigonometric function, cos inverse 1 minus x square upon 1 plus x square is equal to 2 tan inverse x. So, since these two are equivalent structures, I bring this to here. Thus, it becomes d by dx of 2 tan inverse x. You might think, sir, the problem is given in cos, is cos inverse and you are taking tan inverse. Are they same? Yes. When you differentiate these two, whatever the result that you are going to get here in a short form, that is the same result you are going to get even if you directly